It's our story. Stephen Brown, Louisville, Kentucky. Well, I had the great honor this year to be asked to be the Grand Marshal at the second annual Chicago Disability Pride Parade, which is actually where this t-shirt comes from. I don't know if you can see it. It was called Unity Builds Community. And um, and it was very interesting for me in a lot of ways as somebody who's promoted disability culture for the past uh, 15 years or so now. It was really interesting because I, I, this is actually one of the things I wrote about after I um, got back from the parade, which is that um, I tend to be a talking head about disability pride. And I've marched in protests but I've never marched in a parade that was specifically just to show people that you had pride in your disability and being a person with a disability and the disability movement and wasn't protesting something. So I got there about an hour early and I found a chair and I just sat and watched and it was fascinating because there were people with all kinds of disabilities who were gathering and there were a lot of different kinds of wheelchairs there, there were vans, there were um, more placards and signs on the back of chairs um, than you can imagine. Um, t-shirts, Every people had this t-shirt on but people had a lot of other t-shirts. The theme from the year before was disabled and proud and so a lot of people had the disabled and proud t-shirt. Um, and then we gathered and we, we marched for, I think, about a mile. And we ended up in a um, park. And there, were, there was a kind of a U around a stage with a lot of vendors. And then there were some musicians and speakers. And so I actually had the opportunity to speak for about five or 10 minutes. And um, as is my, <laughs> my won't these days, I tend not to prepare um, heavily before I talk, so, um, so I wasn't sure what I was going to talk about until that morning, actually. And this parade happened to be on July 23rd. As I said, I think before we were taping, it's around the anniversary of the ADA. So this was um, the 15th anniversary of the ADA's signing was July 26th, but the parade was on a, fri on a Saturday, and that was July 23rd. And the reason I know that date really well is because 27 years ago, my daughter was born on that date. <laughs> so as I was getting ready that morning to go to the parade, I was thinking about all the changes I'd seen in the last 27 years, both in Amy's life and in the disability rights movement. Now, the first thing I have to say is 27 years ago, 1978, when Amy was born, I'd never heard of the disability rights movement. Um, I was, um, at that point, getting my doctorate in history, and I knew about a lot of other human rights movements, but I didn't know about the disability rights movement. Um, what I did know as Amy was born and as she became a, a young child was that because of my own disability, I was having a hard time keeping up with her in certain things, like if we'd go to the zoo or we'd go to the mall, it really um, was painful, literally painful for me to be able to stand or walk as long as we were at some place. So that was one of my motivations for beginning to use a wheelchair at that point in time is that I wanted to be able to be around her as much as I could. And even though I could walk, it exhausted me and, and hurt both. So being able to use that chair was a way to not only to be with her, but to be with her and in a good space with her, to have fun with her. So um, now, in 75, the um, Education of the Handicapped Act was passed, which we now know as IDEA, the Individual with Disabilities Education Act. In um, 77, the 504 protests happened where people took over the federal building in San Francisco um, and advocated for the implementation of the 504 regulations. In 78, the, when she was born, the Rehabilitation Act was reauthorized and the money for independent living centers was in there. Um, but a lot of things happened in the disability rights movement since 1978. Um, of course, 
independent living centers grew from about a dozen around the country and a few more around the world to somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 today in the United States and many in probably most countries around the world. Um, the Education of the Handicap Act, of course, became more and more um, implemented and so people went from being segregated in, or not going to school at all to beginning to be mainstreamed in schools. And of course, the big one that people, most people know about is the Americans with Disabilities Act was passed in 1990. Um, so there's some, some of the things that have, have happened in Amy's lifetime. Now, another thing that happened in Amy's lifetime is the technological revolution that we know today. For example, when I first got involved in the independent living movement in the early 1980s, um, I wanted to read about disability rights. And what did I do? I went to the library and looked in the card catalog. Well, there's a lot of people today who have never heard of a card catalog. <laughs> you know, they don't exist anymore because you don't need them. It's all on computer. Um, and the other thing is that I found a couple books in the library that were about the disability rights movement from the perspective I there's a lot were a lot of things about disability but I was looking for the rights perspective and there were only a couple of things um, the disability rag started in 1980 and our center had that so that was one of the things I read um, there was a book by a guy named Frank Bow called Handicapping America which was an excellent um, description of what was going on with people we then called handicapped, we now call people with disabilities in this country. Uh, and there wasn't a lot else out there. Um, a few things, but not a lot else. And, you know, I couldn't go on the internet and find other things because there was no internet. And even though interlibrary loan existed, it wasn't as easy to use as it is today. So, um, that that kind of technological revolution has happened in her lifetime. But another thing that's really important happened, and that is um, email. Email and the internet both, you know, kind of putting it together. So um, one of the things that's happened with email is that I've met people like you, but I've also met, met or communicated with people all over the world, some of whom I've then met and have become friends, and some of whom have become email friends who I've never met. So, um, so this technological revolution has been huge for people with disabilities, um, especially people with disabilities who have a difficult time leaving their house or their apartment or the nursing home for whatever reason, because now all of a sudden you have a way to be able to communicate with people. The It's Our Story Project is a national effort to make disability history public and accessible. Visit us at www.itsourstory.org or on the It's Our Story Project YouTube channel.